For Kuma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is former newspaper editor and author Janet Smith, here to unpack her unauthorized biography titled Patrice Motsebe, An Appetite for Disruption. Hi, Janet. Hi, Tabi. The biography details how you dug up public archives to uncover what really makes this usually successful yet intensely private man, Patrice Motsebe, tick. So talk to us more about the research involved and the one interview that you had with Mr. Motsebe in the final stages of the completion of this biography. Tabi, I think I was so curious about Patrice Motsebe uh, because it's very difficult to get a sense of the man in his totality and so the research was fairly wide-ranging, uh, fairly complicated in that it really meant trying to track down things that are not immediately ac accessible. It was one of the most complicated research projects I've done because of trying to get all of these strands together. The interview that I managed to get with, with uh, Dr. Motsebe right at the end of the process uh, was a relief in the sense that I was able to get a sense of his, how he feels in person. But uh, it didn't change anything that I had decided upon to use for the book. Uh, it was more, I guess, just an emotional uh, sense rather than, than, than uh, a political uh, change or political shift. And what really inspired you to pen this biography and what did you want to write about Patrice Motsepe? I think when Patrice Motsepe became the president of the Confederation of African Football um, there was a renewed interest in his influence, in his personal power. It grabbed me. I hadn't had a uh, a clear idea of which aspect of Patrice Mutsepe might be the most important in terms of him being, I suppose, a South African we all look to for solutions in different ways. And so that's what, what kind of, um, you know, got me to, to really approach it uh, for once and for all when he became the president of CAF. And what did you discover about Mr. Mutsepe's early life? Tabi, perhaps that was the only part of the interview I did with him where mm -hmm. I was able to, uh, I suppose, at least have some reinforcement mm -hmm. um, for the research that I did. There is very, very little out there. A uh, lot of our uh, very wealthy individuals in this country mm -hmm. like to tell the stories of when they were children and, you know, how they you know, made their way through um, their lives as young people. But because Motsepe doesn't allow people to do that, I was really putting bits and pieces together. I would say that the um, gratitude that a lot of South Africans of his father's generation, mm -hmm. so that would be um, well, perhaps kind of in between. That would be Khalima Motlante, that would be numbers of, of, of high profile individuals in football. They looked up to Motsepe's father. Mm -hmm. So then you can begin that trail. You can go to, um, you know, to, to the, the next generation and then begin to track a little bit backwards, often through the church, often through mm -hmm. mission records, and then begin to see Motsepe as a child, as a teenager, as a young person. Mm -hmm. And how did Mr. Motsepe start off in the mining and is mining the source of his wealth? Mining is the source of his wealth. There's this, this idea that's perpetuated that Mutsepe was favoured uh, and given contracts um, in, in the 1990s mm -hmm. uh, in order to pursue a particular agenda on behalf of the ANC. It's a difficult one to really prove or really say is the truth. In the late 1980s when Mutsepe was a lawyer, and when he became a partner in one of South Africa's biggest law firms, mm. he was involved in mining law. He was involved in studying mining law. So it was the minutiae of mining law, which, uh, you know, really uh, grabbed his attention. And yet at the back of his mind was the idea of being involved in mining himself as a businessman. Mm. 
So it, it, it's, it's a tough one for me. Uh, people often say that to me, but Mutsepe was a beneficiary of black economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. I think Mutsepe was a little ahead of black economic empowerment. I think his notions of how mining could be changed and how labor could be affected by changing laws in mining and in the minerals and energy sphere, um, he was looking forwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had the opportunities and he took them. It's not advocating that style of capital or that style of capitalism really that, that, that I'm interested in. It's more the individual. It's more what he was thinking about. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us more about uh, Mutsepe's wife, Dr. Precious Muloi Mutsepe? Yes, so again, both of them are relatively mysterious figures in terms mm. of the whole person. So we, we have a sense of her in, in the public realm, again, and we have a sense of her speaking to philanthropy, we have a sense of her speaking to uh, women's empowerment, and of late to the empowerment of, of young South Africans, but it's very difficult to, to see the person in their totality. Mm. I think as a partnership, they work together. They work mm. as foils for each other. And um, the one casts the other into relief and they gain from that. I would say though, that uh, both of them have guarded their privacy themselves mm -hmm. so closely that uh, we, we only see that. Mr. Mutsipe and President Cyril Ramaphosa are related by marriage. So do you think that Mr. Mutsipe will one day become more involved in South African politics? When I was writing this book, I had a clearer picture of that. Mm -hmm. I had a thought that that might be possible. Uh, he himself laughs that off. Mm -hmm. I think now though, that uh, Gianni Infantino, the president of FIFA, mm -hmm. has made the kind of missteps that we associate with FIFA. We, we don't have a, a good view of FIFA as an organization. We see Mutsepe sort of entering that space with more, with more strength. Uh, I think perhaps that is where his greater ambition lies to be the president of FIFA and not the president of South Africa. Whether the two could happen, you know, in, in his own mind as, as possibilities, it, it, it's hard to say. I would definitely agree though that he's not, it, it's not static. Mm -hmm. He's got a view as to where he's going. It's just that at this time, I think FIFA is, is where he's going. Mm -hmm. And talking about uh, about FIFA, can you tell us how uh, FIFA boss uh, Gianni Infanto had a hand in Mutsipe's uh, election as the president? Again, I think this is one of those uh, sort of ideas that is repeated so often that perhaps we we accept it as as truth. I think having a hand in in Mutsipe's, um realization of becoming president of CAF. Perhaps that there might be a reality to it, but I think in, in, in terms of, of Mutsepe's ability to present himself as, a, as a, the right candidate, I think he, he was that. So perhaps the, there was a conflation there where Infantino needed Africa for his own personal uh, goals, which was to remain the president of FIFA. And if he could win over um, you know, the, the members of, of, of CAF, he would achieve that. Um, Mutsepe was willing to, to, to be involved in, in uh, promoting Infantino as the right person for that job. But I think, I think Mutsepe was likely to have been able to do it no matter who the FIFA president was. And since FIFA has not had, uh, you know, the, uh, certainly a president from Southern Africa. Um, I think Mutsepe could see how that could work, you know, for okay. both men. And lastly, Janet, what knowledge and feelings about Mr. Mutsepe do you hope readers take away after reading this biography? Well, <laughs> that's a, a, a very tricky question. I think we, we don't get a warmth 
we don't get a sense of Mutsepe in the way that we do say of uh, even a Jacob Zuma, a Julius Malema. So we regard our politicians um, as, you know, three-dimensional beings. We look for that. Perhaps that's why Ramaphosa is a difficult figure for us, because he is also not that. He doesn't have that real personal warmth. And so people might find a little bit more uh, to, to understand about Mutsepe from this book. I do hope so. I think he is somebody who's got so much still to offer mm -hmm. that if we have more knowledge uh, of him and we have more of an opinion about him, we can ask more of him. And that is, I suppose, what, I, what I'm hoping is that people will, you know, we will be able to see him as a multifaceted person. Whether they agree with his politics is another issue altogether. But historically, there's no doubt that he's already played a, a very important role and that will continue. That was Jeanette Smith speaking to Krima Media's policy about Petrus Motsebe and appetite for disruption.